Father, speak to our spirits today. This morning we have arise, we have risen early so that we will come and bless thy name for blessing us. It was you, Lord, who watched over us through the night as we slumbered and slept. You awakened us early this morning. We were clothed and in our right minds. We had the use of our limbs and we were able to rise and come once again to this place of assembly to worship you in spirit and in truth. We want to thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. Thank you for your grace that is greater than all our sins. Thank you for your love that is unmeasurable. Speak to us this morning. Cast the devil out of our minds. Let the Holy Ghost be here now. Let the anointing fall as fresh rain from heaven. In the name of Jesus, allow me to speak as the oracle of yours. In the name of Jesus, Satan the Lord rebuke you. Satan the Lord rebuke you. Satan the Lord rebuke you. In the name of Jesus. And we bless thy name this morning. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. We give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose presence we stand. And then we give honor to one of the most unique leaders that the Church of God in Christ has ever had. No, uh, no just a minute. Just a, just a minute. Shh, shh, shh. No, 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 no. That's not the way we honor the head of this church, the leader of this church. The man whom the Lord has standing for us. The most esteemed and honored leader of this church. His Grace, the Bishop Charles Edward Blake. That's how we honor our leader. Come on, give God the praise for this unique man of God. Amen. It is an honor and a privilege to serve under his leadership. And to watch the Lord use him mightily to take this church to another realm. Amen? Aren't you glad to be a part of the church of God in Christ? And don't you thank God for the leadership he's given us? Praise the Lord. To my esteemed and honored leader in the second jurisdiction, who's a father to all of us, and we love him dearly, his grace, the Bishop Samuel Green, Jr. And to my good friend and leader of our church as well, his grace, the Bishop White, amen. Who also I want to give thanks to, who served as commissioner of the program. Thank you for selecting me this morning. We were friends up until now. <laughs> I've been married to the same woman for 39 years. Don't have no boyfriend, no girlfriend, got one wife. Please stand, darling. This is my wife, Ernestine, the mother of all of my children. And somewhere seated in this congregation this morning, there are many, many Virginia Beach people here somewhere. Stand up here, please. I hear you. I know you're here somewhere. God bless you. My sons and you know, all of my kinfolk holding it down there. And all of you from Virginia, we praise the Lord for the Virginians here this morning. We get up this morning early and we come to this service because we're seeking the Lord's face. We've heard it preached and we've heard it read, if my people shall call by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. And I believe if we will pray continuously God will send a healing such as this world has not seen before. Amen? I'm thankful for my closest friend and compadre, Elder Y.D. Thurgood, who's my brother. I call him my little brother. Stan Y.D. He's with you. That's my little brother. <laughs> and we have some of our pastors, my first assistant pastors there, Elder John Coston, who also happens to be my brother-in-law. Turn your Bibles, if you will, please, to the book of Psalms, number 100. It's a very familiar passage. And we will read what it says. 
make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. I want you just to backtrack with me for a second and let's go back to verse 3. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Will you repeat that for me? We are his people and the sheep of whose pasture? his pasture. This morning, as an attempt to preach relevantly the wonderful theme that our leader has given the Church of God in Christ and this 104th convocation, I have called your attention to a very familiar passage of scripture that has been accredited to the psalmist and poet David. I have chosen this passage because it addresses directly what has been conveyed by the theme and that is we have an acute understanding of who we are and whose we are. This passage leaves no room for doubt. It emphatically states we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Therefore, I want you to know that as God's church, God's people, we are called to function according to God's agenda. Say with me, as God's people, God's church, we are called to function according to God's agenda. Now, if you talk back to me, I'll drop it like it's hot. But if you don't talk back to me, I'll preach two hours thinking that you don't understand me. So talk back to me. We can get it on through here. What do you say about it? There is no argument as to the ownership. And since we have established ownership, we now must move on to determine God's right to set an agenda for his church and his people. From the beginning of time, scripture has clearly stated that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all that dwell therein. God, by his word, brought the world into existence, created the earth, and established it in its universe. The power of his word set the celestial elements in the heavens above the fullness of the earth below. Now, although the word revealed the image of man that was in the mind of God, it was the power of God's creation in spoken word and his divine compassion that actually meticulously formed man from the dust of the earth, breathed into him the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Therefore, we are his workmanship, the creation of his hands. To believe 
Darwinism or evolution and the theory of man evolving from an ape or some lesser creature is to deny the sovereign power of God's word in creation. To believe the theory of evolution also denies the fact that man is a living soul, accountable and answerable to God in eternity. Apes don't speak in tongues. Apes don't have an anointing. Apes cannot preach the gospel. Apes do not have the choice of decision. But God created us and gave us the privilege of choice. And I don't know about you this morning, I have chosen to praise his name. My brothers and my sisters, God's agenda for his people does not provide for modern day acceptance of deviant lifestyles. The Bible declares that God created man in his own image. Male and female made he them. If this is true, and it is, then there is no line item on God's agenda for perverted individuals who have turned from their natural affections and have worked within themselves that lust that is an abomination to God and is unclean. God's agenda is strictly and plainly articulated in Paul's letter to the church at Corinth when he says, let every man have his own wife and every woman her own husband. To justify deviant lifestyles and marriages that are contrary to the scriptures and against God's agenda is open rebellion. Since this is God's church and we are God's people, we are bound to fashion and live our life according to his word. My brothers and my sisters, God's church does not need another scandal. God's people do not need to know another depraved so-called man of God who has been corrupt by the God of this world. The agenda that God has for his church does not provide for men and women who are child molesters, freaks, perverts, subscribers of pornography, alcoholics, drug abusers, fornicators, rapists, feminine men and mannish women, homemongers, extortioners, thieves and liars. All of these along with many others are the, the devil and they slip in amongst us to overtake our youth and those who are foolish at heart. These things are enmity towards God and are not subject to the law of God. Nor are there at any time. One final thing concerning this rebellion, and we must move on, and that is the scripture tells us that we have been bought with a price, and we are not our own. Therefore, we must glorify God in our bodies and in our spirit, which are God's. My friend, God has exclusive rights. Because he not only created and made us, but he also purchased and redeemed us on the cross of Calvary through his son, Jesus Christ. For when we were without hope, I wonder would you help me to say that? For when we were without hope, Christ died for the ungodly. Aren't you glad this morning that when we were wretched undone, on our way to a devil's hell, Christ died for the ungodly and gave us a right to the tree of life. Can the church say yes? yes. Ministers of the Gospels and missionaries must always be mindful of the fact that this is God's church and these are God's people. We do not have the privilege to guide them in the way that suits our personal agendas. God is a holy God. Therefore, he demands holiness. And as much as we have been called to uplift 
and minister to the whole man, it is not ours to leave the gospel of Jesus Christ and acquire some social or philosophical agenda in order to gain the approval of godless society that's filled with fallen, wicked, deviant, depraved humanity. God's church and his people are not to be filled with the gospel of prosperity that's built on the premises of name it, claim it, grab it, and you can have it. This sort of gospel has caused people to lose faith and to be filled with false hope that never materializes. God's people and his church are not to be fed the gospel of inclusionism, the gospel that all men are saved no matter how they can live. And no matter what they do, they can never be lost. Nor can his church strive and survive of a program and other schemes designed to appease men's fleshly appetite. But God has called us unto holiness, unto righteous living. Can the church say yes? God established his church on the premises of Jesus Christ being the head, the way, the truth, and the life. His church is a band of baptized believers who have trusted Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior. Thusly, God requires his church to be bound together with faith, love, peace, joy, and forgiveness, restoration, and healing. If God's church is to endure, we must preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must preach the grace of God that brings salvation has appealed to all men, teaching that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and God am I in a holiness church here this morning? And godly in this present world. Our message is still come out from among them and be ye separated, said the Lord. I believe and our practices is still follow peace with all men and holiness without. No man shall see the Lord. We still believe that you must be born again. We still believe that you must walk upright and live holy every day. We must preach to the saints. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. We must preach to the saints that not only does Jesus save, but he also keeps, protects, lead, and guide. The inspired port wrote, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. We've got to tell the saints that God demands total reliance upon him. We ought to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not to our own understanding but in all of our ways we've got to acknowledge him and he shall direct our path can the church say yes we must preach to all the sufficiency of God and that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask all things We've got to trust him because the way of the Lord is righteous. The way of the Lord is just. The way of the Lord is pure. We've got to trust his agenda. And we've got to walk before him in the path that he's prescribed. Can somebody say yes? Say yes. If God's church is to be relevant in this 21st century, then it must once again be endowed with the power of the Holy Ghost. We don't like to talk about that because we've gotten caught up in the glossolalia and into the move of charismaticism. But we are a classical Pentecostal holiness church. And we believe that the power of the Holy Ghost is a quickening power that gives life to the believer. We believe that the power of the Holy Ghost is a teaching power 
that'll teach you how to walk right, that'll guide you into truth, that'll help you to honor God. We need this Holy Ghost power, not just form and fashion, going through the motion, but we need power, help me say power, to walk up right before God. We need Holy Ghost power to stand against the wiles of the devil. We're living in wicked times. These are perilous times. We're living in a dangerous time. But if you have the Holy Ghost, you have power over the enemy. Say yes. Yes. Hallelujah. we got power with God to stand against everything that come against his plan. Holy Ghost power that equips the saints to do battle against the spirit of this age. The power of the air that has established principalities, strongholds, and demonic influences. The power of the Holy Ghost gives you the authority and the agility to stand against the wicked. Can the church say yes? We have Holy Ghost power that goes into the wretched places, converting the unsaved, giving life to the hopeless, uplifting the downtrodden. Help me say power is God's agenda that we should be empowered with supernatural influence. Yes, Lord, and God's people, God's people have been called out and set aside for his divine purpose. We still must be sanctified. We still must be different. We still are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill. Hallelujah. That cannot be hidden. It's the power of the Holy Ghost inside of you and I that gives us the ability to shine in this dark world. If everybody else has gone the other way, we've got to stand for righteousness. Stand for holiness. Stand uncompromising. Steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding in God's agenda. Can the church say yes? No longer do we walk and have fellowship with those who walk in darkness. We have been cleansed and renewed in the spirit of our minds. We have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Say yes, Lord. We have been sanctified through the truth and made partaker of God's divine nature. No longer do we walk in fear and that's petrified sin that condemns our ungodly lifestyle that destroys. No, my friend, we walk, help me say we walk, we walk in the awesome fear of the law. We walk in the revelation of the truth. For the Bible says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth and the truth shall set you free. I want to have just a few more minutes, but I want you to realize, can the church say yes, that we walk in the power of his might and in the strength and salvation of his love, riches cannot beguile us, demons cannot curse us, evil cannot overcome us, and an enemy cannot defeat us, because the Bible says that we're walking according to God's agenda. No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper if you're living by God's agenda. The Holy Ghost surround you. The angels are present. The word is 
a weapon that defends, that equips, that gives you strength to stand in this evil day. Somebody say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been predestined and sealed with the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption. And although we are human and are subject to make mistakes, we have a mediator and an intercessor who perpetuates a high priest who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities, interceding on our behalf. Jesus told us who are following his agenda. I've already prayed for you. I pray that Satan will not overtake you. Can the church say yes? We have God. We have a God who has declared that we stand for him. He will defend us if you walk right, if you live right, if you do right, God will take care of you. Say yeah. Finally, we realize that God has the right to call his people to revival. He's calling his people to repent and cast off the garments of sin the garments of sadness, the garments of shame and disgrace. Yes, Lord. And put on, put on the robe of righteousness and be identified. Can the church say yes? The true holiness. God is calling his church to renew us. Not just the same old jump and shout without being fully delivered, but to be a Holy Ghost church with an Holy Ghost outpouring that would drive men to repentance and salvation. A Holy Ghost anointing that would stab the fire of evangelism and so many. God, God is calling his ministers who are his servants to lead his people to live in fountains of water so they may drink, they may drink of that living family and the stream that gives life. Those who drink of this family, this fountain, will find out that you become effective in spreading the gospel. Can the church say yes? For the word says, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord. You ought to grab somebody and say, listen here. If you, if you have the Holy Ghost that's hooked up here, come together. Because you have power. You have power. To overcome the enemy. Power! Power! I've got to hurry up, y'all. My time is gone. But God is calling his people to a fresh anointing that will empower them to be effective in witnessing, spreading the gospel to every nation kindred and tongue. It is God's agenda and God's desire and God's purpose to anoint us with a supernatural outpouring. Church of God in Christ, whatever you do, do not consume, do not come into this new age agenda because the music is hot, the song is hot, we're jumping, jerking, and checking. But brothers and sisters, we need to live so that the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's inside of us, when you come in where we are dwelling, it makes a difference. 
yokes are being destroyed. Satan's power is broken. Demons back up. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The dumb talk. You ought to grab somebody. It's a power! Grab somebody and say, power! Not just making noise. Not just entertaining. Not putting on the front. But real Holy Ghost power. Dwelling in us. Setting us free. With the ability to take it to the streets. To preach to the prostitutes. And this crazy sex crazy generation. That Jesus is still the answer. He's a deliverer. He's a sanctifier. He's a baptizer. He'll pick you up. He'll turn you around. He'll give you new life. He'll give you joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. You can experience what Jeremiah said. It's just like fire. It's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. We the people who have subscribed to God's agenda will declare to the world that there is salvation for the sinners, help for the faithful, and deliverance for those who are bound by demonic forces that corrupts and destroy. We're still saying, come over here where the table is. Come over here where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord. Yes, my friends, we are the church. God's people and we're following God's agenda. Will you stand to your feet please? we have forsaken the God of this world and have completely sold out to the God of our salvation. Ask the person next to you, have you sold out or do you still have reluctances? But I promise you, if you set out to God's agenda, everything, come on and say everything is going to be all right. Lift that right hand and say everything. Side, every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. We resign from the things of this world and we now walk in the newness of life. We're moved because he has commanded us. We walk in the vocation wherein we have been called because he called us. We do exploits because we are strong in the law and in the power of his might. We have received the Holy Ghost who enables us to cast out devils. Take thy right hand and lay it on someone and says, in the name of Jesus, I lay hands on you. Sickness, disease, depression, despondency has no place in you. They have no place in you. The power of God's word infiltrates you now. Casting out demons, casting out devils, quickening you to life. You can get up now. You can get up now. You can get up now. 
You can preach to this confused, debauched generation that this is the day of salvation. This is the day of deliverance. You got to tell that saint who's become discouraged, give me your hands. You've got to get up. Come on and grab someone say, neighbor, you've got to get up. It's time to believe what God says. It's time to believe what God says. Give him a little tug and say, get up. Get up, get up, get up. Get up. He will quicken you. Get up. It's a fresh anointing. Not the same old, same old. But it's a fresh anointing from the law. Grab and say, get up. It's on the agenda. It's time to awake out of sleep. You've got to get up. You've got to get up. you say that because the moment you do that he started backing up it's our wall cry oh, oh, oh. you better clap those hands you better clap your hands come on get the sleep out your eyes and clap your hands oh 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 Come on, cast the devil out. Cast him out. Oh, cast him out. Cast him out. Hallelujah. 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 Sickness and disease cannot dwell in you. That wicked one has no authority and no power. We're moving in God's agenda and we're doing what God says do. We are God's church, God's people, functioning on God's agenda. We're doing his will. Join hands with someone quickly in this room. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The Holy Ghost is in here. He promised when we preached holiness that he will move on our behalf. And every sickness, everything that plagues you, every power that has risen up against you is bound, cast down, and cast out Satan the Lord God rebuke you you have no place and you have no authority we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and we are a partaker of his divine nature hallelujah we walk in holiness. We walk in authority. We have dominion. We have power. We come against you, Satan. You are a liar and a deceiver. But the power of the Holy Ghost that's in us come against you. We are delivered. We are delivered. We are delivered right now. Just in case.
pace you have standing beside your brother or sister who's tired, sleepy, dead, no joy, no anointing. Tell them, say, excuse me, I've got to hook up right now with someone who's anointed because it's an outpouring. It's an outpouring that comes from above. It's a fresh anointing. It's a fresh outpouring. It's a reviving move of the Holy Ghost. Hey! 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, my son. Now, right now, take those blessed hands under this anointing and lay it on somebody. Doesn't matter who they are. If they look mean and hateful, just lay hands on them in a way. They need it right now. They need it right now. Let the Spirit of God flow through you. Touching others. Lifting others. Destroying yokes. Casting out devils. Setting the captive free. Renewing your strength. Renewing your mind. Renewing your determination. Putting a press in you. Increasing your joy. Increasing your joy. Lifting you up, taking you higher, quickening your body. It's the move of God. It's a move of God. Give him glory for it. Praise him. Exalt his name. Bless the name of Jesus. Before I release you, I want you to turn to someone and tell them, we are more than conquerors. We are overcomers and victorious through him who loves us. We are his church, his people, following his agenda. And he is, he is our God. Yes, yes. I don't feel no ways tired. I've come too far from where I've started from. Nobody told me. I thought I'd find a witness over here. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. Nobody told me that I wouldn't have to cry sometime. But I don't believe. I don't believe he brought me this far. I thought I had a witness over here. I don't believe that God has brought us this far to leave us something inside of me keeps telling me go ahead because everything is going to be all right. Let us pray. Hey, Lord, with the God. Lord, ha, hallelujah. I don't want you to dance because it sound good, feel good, or fashionable. I want you to dance because you know that you know that you know. You have the victory right now. You have the victory over everything, every situation. 
you walk in victory. You stand in victory. You know for yourself that God has worked it out for you. You know yourself that God has released in your life those favor, the blessings that have been long overdue. The devil has been holding you back, but God is making a way for you. Please tell somebody, say, right now, God is making a way for you. Right now, God is making a way for you. Right now, a way is already made. all the way up to it. I am delivered. Hey! I am delivered. I am delivered. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Just before you're seated, I want you to take someone by the hand on both sides of you. Just before you're seated. And I want you to say to God, we are joined together by faith and by the word of God and we expect a mighty move of God in this place demons and devils have already been cast out and the power and a fresh anointing from the Lord is upon us now we are revived we are renewed we are encouraged in these times in which we now live. We realize that our God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches, glory by Christ Jesus. Tell the person who you're holding, it's already done. If they didn't believe it, turn and tell someone else, it's already done. One more time, it's already done. Oh, oh, oh. 